I like, click, subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is. It's Netflix time. Vincent, so episode seven. You already know what it is. Spoiler alert. Let's get it. So when we last left off, Vin was about to testify on the stand. And how's he able to do this? Because he also claims he's a witness and an assailant. So they had to come up with a plan before they did this. The day before he had started a fight with some Babel associates, which explains why he came to the courtroom in handcuffs. But as he was beating up these guys, he dropped his phone and slid it over to his assistant who was disguised in a Babel uniform, claiming they had heart problems at the time, but secretly captured the phone that was dropped. The phone he dropped belonged to one of the guys he beat up that had some incriminating text messages on it. And as a backup plan, if that wasn't enough, and as a backup plan, yeah, this guy, the head doctor or pharmaceuticals, Chai ends up bringing in another witness, the doctor's wife. Oh shit. Definitely throwing a huge loophole in their plans. Now, how did Vincent Zoe pull this off? Well, he did his research on her and met her at the art gallery. And come to find out, his wife actually practices in medicine herself. She gives Vin her husband's medical history, the money he stole from the company. And on top of that, he was planning to divorce her and leave her with nothing. And on top of that, he's been cheating on her. So Vin Brom promises her with all this evidence, in the divorce, she'll basically get all the money. All she's got to do is testify against him, so she's in. And that's how that came about. Then his wife proceeds to whip his candy ass in court. Yeah, me, huh? Your position ain't looking good right now. Say, hunt is beyond pissed the fuck off. He tells his brother we have no choice but to settle with the uh, workers or whatever like that. Just fall back and go to the other plan. Successful day in court. One for the good guys. Say, hunt's driving like 2,000 miles an hour. He is pissed the fuck off. And you can see the people in the back. It looks like they're about to die. Cha says he wants to repair a debt to Vin, like he'll do anything he wants. He just wanted to get a pair of suits, like 10 of them. Then she also gives him a gift. She gets him a pen with his name on it. Sehun drives these niggas in the middle of the desert to pull out his trunk. You know ain't nothing good coming out of this shit. Putting on gloves? I smell death. Oh shit, he done pulled out a golf club. Yeah, get your goofy ass back in the car. Taking his frustrations out of the car? You gotta understand, this case including the factory that was burnt down, he lost a lot of fucking money. This nigga can't come up with anything. But Mihan saves his ass again. And he gives her three days to come up with something. I'm pretty sure she don't want to know what's going to happen after three days. She goes back to the office. Her lawyers ain't giving her shit. Desperate times for me, hon. Everybody else crowded out around the hospital for the monk's friend. He's been saved thanks to Vin and Chai. He talks about the project of building them a better home, but they don't sound as enthusiastic as they were before. Why is that? I'll explain later. So Vin meets up with this guy again. He tells them to keep halt on the, uh, the demolition for about another week. Then he gets on the phone with Cho. He talks to him about a building designer that's about to come through there tomorrow. Meanwhile, Mihan's trying to get some stuff done. The chief inspector, her former boss, he looking at her like, man, if you don't get the fuck out of here, he ain't trying to hear nothing you guys say. Yeah, man. Your last resort just went up in smoke. Vincent Sell's walking around the building. He's spying in on the little boy that he's always been trying to get out to smoke. He's got this backward mask on, like, what the fuck? And this is the first time in the whole show you see Vin scared as shit. <laughs> but it's basically makeup for a costume that he does. He's doing stuff for YouTube. As Vin goes back in his room, he's admiring his pen and he gets a call from Cho again. So at this point, the investor came and he's downstairs with Vin. Meanwhile, Cho has got the Buddhist brothers up on top of the top floor. He's supposed to be distracting them by asking them random questions, which he does long enough for the investor to inspect the whole place. And he basically tells him because the building is so old, there's no way for him to drill down to get to the gold. If he tries to drill down, the whole building would collapse anyway. So now he's got to find some other way to get this gold, which if y'all forgot was the main reason why he's in Korea in the first place. Then we get the scene with Sehan and his brother Wang. Then we get a flashback of Sehan when he was in the hospital with his father who was pretty much in a coma. And this is how ruthless Sehan is. He orders the doctor he had back then to inject his father with some poison to kill him. But he did it because his father was responsible for his mother's death. They don't elaborate on it any further than that though. Meanwhile, his brother Wang was outside the room and he tells his brother he can come in he's dead now. Then he tells him he looks just like his dad. Oh shit. But he's just fucking with him at this point. This dude is certifiably crazy. Meanwhile on the rooftop, Vin and Cho are trying to figure out some other way to get this gold. They haven't come up with anything yet, but you know they will. Okay, so the reason why the tenants were so blase about the move into another spot and kind of skeptical of Vincent Zoe at this point is because of what the homeless man told him on that day. He told him that there's actually gold in this building, but he doesn't know where it is. Then he said the people that knew about it that day brought some other niggas in and they started murking niggas. He was in the corner and he saw the whole thing. Some of them still didn't believe him, so then he showed him a picture. What did the picture contain? This guy holding up bars of gold. Some of them still think it's bullshit because they're like, well, why would they bury gold here? But then some of them believe him because they're thinking to themselves, why is Vin trying to move us out so bad? Back in the office, Vin turns on the news. Here's Wayne giving public apologies and making sure everybody's compensated for their loss and stuff like that. And they're like, obviously he sounds disingenuous, but Vin's like, man, he's not doing that for the people. He's doing that so they can get a lighter jail sentence if they get one. So Vic goes back to the crew once again and talks about the moving arrangements. And again, they're feeling even more apprehensive about it. But since now they know about the gold, now we know why. And then out of the blue, here come these niggas again. This guy's always raising his hand like he's about to do something. Like he does this all the time. But it's like, man, such a goofy ass down. So the tenants are like, you know what? We all gonna fight for this building. We ain't going nowhere. So the guys are confused. Even Vince confused. 
So they're gonna carry out some plan tonight and take the place by force. So then they go back to the office again. Here come the cops again. What do they want now? They hit arrest Chai again, talking about they got evidence. This has got me unwritten all over it. So apparently they got some type of evidence on flash drives with Chai and something like that. It's strong enough to keep her in there this time. So now Vince gonna come up with a plan to save Chai. And you gotta do it quick before they transfer him to real jail. So what does he do? Confront Mihan face to face at, at a gambling table. So instead of fighting, he wants to make a deal with her. He says, sign this document and you get Chai free and in, re in return, I'll make sure you get good graces back with the chief. She doesn't trust him, but nevertheless she signs it cause she knows she's in a fucked up position right now. He meets up with the chief and he wants the chief to go to Europe to get in any kind of school he wants for soccer. There's supposed to be a certain star that he wants his son to train it under. So you know Vin did his research on him. And he just so happened to bring that guy to his son. Vince says, oh no, people in high places. He calls up Mihon, gives her another shot. Mihon makes the call to jail, tell him it's all bullshit. And Chai is free. Chai was kind of mad that he had to make a deal with Mihon, her sworn enemy. But she got over it real quick. The tenants, however, just are chilling, enjoying life. These niggas ready to go take the plaza. So apparently they were giving orders to attack people in red jackets. Why? Because that's the type of security that's going to be there. But why is Cho directing them? Well, simply put, this is all part of Vin's plan. He wants them to get attacked and get it recorded on video. That way it shows negligence and showing that they're trying to take stuff by force. He's going to get the little boy in the background to record the whole thing that does graphic designs with his, you know, face and stuff like that. So the plan's all set when they're coming through. It just so happened the cop came out first. He was taking out trash. He just happens to have a red jacket on. So they attack him off GP. The boy comes out and warns all the tenants that was happening and they said fuck this shit we had enough it's time to take our building back and they all come out ready to whip everybody's candy ass and he's recording all the action so events come back ready to see all the handiwork is done but he finds out from Cho the crew hasn't got there yet one of them got poisoned or something like that and they got affected so they had to turn back around so Vin's like all right if they're not there who the hell are they fighting and it's actually the tenants fighting back they fuck people up and the way they're standing reminds them of a picture of back in the day yeah that's what Vin's thinking about right about now and that's how the episode ends wow well, that was a lot so ready for episode eight Wait, did you have to hear you know what it is, Mr. Skitsy Skitty? Ha 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 ha! Big, who's got them slogan?